Oh, yes, it's hot. Well, it is now, but it was cold last night. It's up and it's down. Did you know that at least half of the energy in your home, I understand, is uh, because of the heating and the cooling, right? Well, we got to get it working right for us. Cindy Dole, Home Wizards, and I thought we'd have some pros come in to help us because uh, recently we had our heater and our cooling system checked out, and boy, were we blowing it. And, you know, we don't even think about it that maybe you watch the thermostat and you change the filter, but there's so much more uh, to be thinking about. And so I thought we could kind of analyze why it is when those, those chilly days happen, you wake up in the middle of the night in the morning and you want to know why the heater isn't working right. With me is Mark Schneider. And his wife Cynthia with Pacific Air. So thanks for being here, guys. Thank you, Cindy. So, Mark, tell me first of all, you're nodding your head. It is true that our home uses most of the energy from our heating and cooling, right? It really does, yes. Yeah. It, it, is, it has been proven that that is the single thing that you can do to improve your efficiency in your home with your gas use and electrical use, electricity especially if you have air conditioning. Mm-hmm. And so, I would guess that most of us don't really know and understand how our heater works. Right? I mean, I, we, just, we just expect it to work. It's that hidden appliance behind the door. <laughs> you don't know. You see the thermostat. You feel the heat. But you forget that that's a you know, potentially dangerous fire-burning device that you know, produces carbon monoxide if it's not Yikes. done properly. And, but you're right. It's out of sight, out of mind. So. Yeah. And, and you know, maybe we think about changing the filter from time to time, but we probably don't even do it enough. Do you, we? you would be the exception. It's amazing when we go into homes and we see people that have not changed their filter in years and years and years. Wow. Yeah. And the reason that's bad news, I mean, the thing's choking, right? Right, exactly. It it is a piece of equipment that needs everything to balance. So it has to have air going across the burners and the heat exchanger. Otherwise, it gets too hot and Mm -hmm. it doesn't work. So what what is it about heaters? I mean, when were heaters invented? I mean, I guess the Um, gas heater. They, they've had forms of heaters for over 100 years, or well, hundreds of years, if you want to consider firebox, uh, fireplaces, yeah. gravity heaters. That's right. been around forever. In fact, a lot of homes that were built in the turn of the century, last century, they were just this huge firebox with uh, ducts that would the heat would just gradually, um, through gravity, come up into your house. But actually, um, I believe it was uh, Dave Lennox created the first oh, forced air there it is. heater. Yeah, he took one of the heating devices, these gravity heaters, and put a blower on it and said, wow, instead of waiting for gravity, let's push the heat into the house. And so he's kind of uh, known for being the inventor of that. So obviously it's it's improved a lot over the hundred years, but but it hasn't it hasn't hasn't changed that much over the past few decades, has it? Most what's happened is just efficiency. Mm-hmm. You know, heat is heat. So mm-hmm. a BTU, a British thermal unit, is a British thermal unit. So I mean, it's heat is heat, and nothing's changed there. But how efficient, how much energy, how much gas do you have to buy to produce the heat that you get in your house? That's gone from systems that were. 30, 40, 50 percent efficient to now, I think the highest efficient is 98 percent. So that's been a huge improvement. And in terms of how long a heater should last, I mean, I'm guessing too, because they're more efficient, they probably Mm -hmm. last longer. But typically, the homeowner can expect a heater or a furnace to be with them, what, maybe 15 years? Yeah. Interesting comment, though. Efficiency doesn't necessarily improve longevity. longevity. Oh. Oh. I use the analogy of an old 55 Chevy V8 compared to today's modern engines uh-huh. with all the technology and computers. And when you squeeze efficiency out of something, uh, an example is the, the firebox, the heat exchanger. In, a, in an old 20, 30-year-old heater that was inefficient, it might be a heavy gauge metal firebox. Today, they want to transfer the heat, 98% of the heat, so they make them super thin. Well, because they're so thin and they heat and expand and contract and expand, they don't last as long. So heat exchangers, uh, a lot of the builder model heat exchangers only have 10-year warranties on them. So they only expect them to last 10 years, and then they'll be breaking. And the better units, you know, you can get 20 years out of. So. so- it, so then if we're thinking on a very cold morning as we're waking up and it's and it, you know, we're just worried that we're not getting warm enough fast enough, what is possibly going on? Is it because it's too old or there's a series of things that, mm-hmm. that we need to diagnose? Yeah, first thing check as a homeowner is your filter. The filter is one of the number one causes of lack of airflow. And we'll go ahead and change the filter and all of a sudden, wow, now I have air again. So filter is very important. Uh, it not being warm enough air, then it could be your gas pressures could be off or possibly you have some mechanical challenges with your unit. So. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And is there a certain kind of filter that you prefer for our heater? We like more of the pleated filters. Uh, they, they standardize all the efficiencies of filters to a MERV rating and they used to use percentages, but you know, 98% of something that was 
a rock obviously isn't as good as a 50% that's as a hundredth of a micron. So mm-hmm. anyway, they have MERV filters, and we, we suggest you go at least a MERV 8, um, a pleated filter. Pleated filter, mm-hmm. yeah, because I don't think we had the pleated filter in our in our attic, and it's, it's making a huge difference yeah. already. Huh? The only challenge is it, it's going to work a lot better, but it's going to clog faster. So whereas maybe the old cheap dime filter you could get away with a year or two because everything went through it, oh. now this filter catches everything. But that's good because everything went through it. You were breathing the bad air, right? right? Well, it's much better, but if you don't check it every three to six months, you might oh find that you're going to, yeah. Well, we have lots to talk about. We're going to talk about um, how the efficiency has improved and more of the diagnosis of uh, the hidden problems like the carbon monoxide and the Very asbestos important. and, yeah. and all that kind of icky stuff that could be going on through the air ducts and your, your furnace up in that dark place of the attic right? Exactly. You're listening to Home Wizards. We're talking with our friends at Pacific Air. Maybe you have a question about your heating system. Hey, have at it. Our number is 888-KFWB980. 888-539-2980. Cindy Dole. We're back after this. Just like My mother it was one of those mornings where you wanted to have your feet jammies and your cocoa and have that furnace going. And luckily it was for me. Cindy Dole here, Home Wizards, every Saturday uh, from 2 to 4. But with me are some folks who can make sure that your heating and cooling system is working when you want it to, darn it. Uh, Mark and Cynthia Schneider with a Pacific Air. And so, Mark, uh, we're going to get to more of the problem troubleshooting aspects of this. But in terms of just making sure that we are breathing safe air, that's also something that you, you know, make sure is is an important aspect of our homes and, and our lives, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah we, I mean, asbestos and and, yeah. and all that. Yeah. If your homes were built prior to 1980, there's a very good chance you have asbestos in your duct system. Yeah, because so, well, I went up in the attic with Keith, and he was showing me that it was there, yeah. but he said, as long as you don't touch it, it should be okay. Well, That's kind of scary. Yeah. I kind of prefer just to say get you it should out. get rid of it, yeah. um, especially if you have a metal duct with asbestos wrap, because they never sealed the duct. So they put the duct together, wrapped it with asbestos, and sealed the asbestos. So in essence, they're encapsulating the asbestos into your duct system. So when you run your system, it pulls the asbestos through the duct system. So my feeling is, even if you don't bump it or damage it, is get it out don't of the Don't risk it. Yeah, it. Have you seen house. some really bad cases? Oh, yeah. I yeah. mean, what happens when you, when you see it? It's just all over in the it, attic? And... Yeah, it's, it, it's very common to see, especially in the 70s, 60s, 50s, 60s, and 70s, the duct systems were asbestos, and we get it in the attic, and you see them sagging and opening up, and you just see the, the dust. Ooh, and, ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, it yeah. Just, and, they've, and they've shown California is always the front runner of efficiency, and California has realized that your duct system is actually more important as far as efficiency right. than your heating system because you can lose 50% of your air through your duct system. So you could put a brand new 95% furnace in there and half it's going in the attic. So you do better with a 70, 80% efficient furnace and a tight duct system. So the whole duct design has changed, hasn't it? It's evolved to something yeah. that's better. And, and the method of sealing, the way they require us to seal them now so yeah. that they don't leak. It's not with duct tape. No, duct tape is gone. <laughs> duct tape is for the handyman, not for yeah. the HVAC business yeah. anymore. What do you use to keep them secure? There's actually, you, know, you ever seen packing tape? Sure. It looks more like the packing tape. Okay. Plus we have to clamp it. So you actually have to have a, put a plastic clamp to hold it together and then the sealant is the duct tape or not duct tape the uh, mm-hmm. they call it venture tape and it's like the packing tape and then we actually have we call it pookie but it's like a pookie yeah, it's called pookie but it's oh, that's a, what you call your wife <laughs> <laughs> oh pookie it's, it's like a, a a white mastic and we paint it on with paintbrushes to uh-huh. kind of seal it and so it's a rubber kind of sealant so and then they come after us and there's a third party validation. So they come and pressure test the duct system to ensure there's no leakage at all. So uh-huh. that's part of California law now. Well, I think uh, when we come back in the next hour, we're going to get into the carbon monoxide thing, the energy credits. Um, and I think energy audits are something. I'm not sure mm-hmm. if you folks do that or we you do. work with other people, but I think a lot of us are, are shocked to discover that. Gosh, we are really losing a lot of energy and, and wasting a lot of money. You know, mm, absolutely. And it's, it's kind of scary to think. And then in terms of uh, some of the different things that can go wrong with our heater, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people have had it where it goes gunk. You know, it's like it just kind of makes this thumping noise, right? You probably get phone calls and all they they just they know what the sound is. They don't know anything more, yep. right? You get yep. some funny stories oh, like yeah. that. What are some of the? I mean, always around the holidays too. I'm sure. Oh yeah, we've we've been at 
customers' homes Christmas Eve. Have you really? Putting in units because it'll go clunk clunk for the last time. And we have family. We need to take care of it. We're cold. Santa's coming and this is not fun. Oh, yeah. (laughs) You know, or or maybe it's like, I'm sorry, go ahead. A real common thing when your filters are clogged and the unit's broken is we call it delayed ignition where the gas comes into the the chamber but doesn't ignite and then all of a sudden ignites. Well, it's like a mini explosion. And so they'll go, yeah, when I turn it on, it goes bang really loud a couple times. That's not And we're like, yeah, it's not safe. You don't want to do that. You don't want it to go no. bang. All right, no. well, we're going to segue into our second hour and talk more about how to make sure that that heater is working correctly on your uh, on your home sweet home because that's what we're all about here at Home Wizards. Cindy Dole, don't you go away because we are just getting started.